Alrighty. Hi guys, this is Janet. I have Alexis Britford with me from Columbus, Ohio, working at Thomas Worthington High School. Alexis, tell me a little bit about the research you've conducted. Yeah, so my research was titled Black Athletic Trainers Experiences, um, Joining and Being Part of the Athletic Training Profession. Uh, I did this while I was in grad school. So what I really wanted to look at was the lack of diversity that we have in our profession. What I ended up doing was interviewing 13 black athletic trainers and basically asking them about the experiences that they had um, when they were younger. And then as they grew up, up in their education fields, as well as professionally. And from there, I drew out some themes. I got six themes back from that. And I mean, that's pretty much how that went. What were the top three themes that you found? So probably would have to be the lack of diversity, whether that being um, in the workforce where they were working or throughout their education, as well as um, the lack of mentorship. A lot of the athletic trainers that I um, interviewed did not have mentors or they would state that they had parents as mentors or coaches at, as mentors. They never really had a mentor of diverse. They, they weren't diverse as a mentor if they had any type of mentor and some of them never met a black or a person of color mentor until, you know, two, three, five years later as becoming a professional. Um, then the last one being, unfortunately, discrimination. Um, things that they experienced being a certified athletic trainer. Were there some specific stories that you can tell us about discrimination that your participants spoke on? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, one that like rings in my head was there was an athletic trainer who he was working and athletes were coming up and completely disregarding him and going over to his coworker um, because they didn't want to be touched by him because he was different than his coworkers. So that was one. And then another one was an athletic trainer being called uh, the N-word while they were working because they wouldn't tape an athlete right then and there in that moment, um, which, is, which is huge. You know, you don't expect an athlete to call you out of your name um, in a hateful way while you're trying to do your job. And I mean, it wasn't that they weren't trying to tape them, it was just that they were busy in that moment. So, you know, totally unacceptable, obviously, but those were two that really stuck out to me. Were there any differences that you found between male and female athletic trainers? Um, not really. Um, there were some female athletic trainers who would say that it was a, a little bit more difficult to differentiate between, you know, if they were being discriminated against because of their color or because of because that they were a female or both so i mean they all majority of the athletic trainers in this study all were experienced discrimination at some point but the females at some some point in time stated that they didn't know whether or not it was due to what they looked like or who they were and with this research was there anything that you learned that you didn't know before? Hmm. It was it was nice because throughout this research, I was able to meet a lot of black athletic trainers, even those who didn't participate in this study, um, who I felt like had a lot of similar experiences with me. And a lot of athletic trainers who all felt the same and the sense of, you know, there aren't many of us, but like being introduced to, I mean, EDAC in itself, knowing that there is a group of athletic trainers who have similar experiences, have similar beliefs. Um, I think that was huge in knowing that, you know, there are a lot of, and it's just a young professional like me, I didn't even know that existed. So having my eyes opened up to this is here and there is support for those who don't know. And I mean, it probably would have been 
extremely useful to me when I was an undergrad. But like I said, I didn't really know about it until I got to graduate school. And like I said, super thankful when I did find out about it and, you know, looking forward to being more involved. But I think EDAC was probably one of the, the biggest things that opened my eyes was just, you know, thinking that I was almost one of the only ones um, coming from like a small town in Michigan where I went to undergrad, you know, being the only black minority student in general in the athletic training program I, the entire four years I was there um, and never seeing a black athletic trainer never even knowing that you know there are some or any type of minority in the athletic training field so I think more so for me it was just nice to see that we exist so moving forward are you looking to get more involved with EDAC more involved with representation amongst athletic, young athletic trainers? Yeah, so I mean, probably the biggest thing that I'm interested in for now is I want to be able to, you know, create a program more so. I was involved a lot with the youth at like recreation centers um, on the east side of Columbus, which was where I grew up. And I feel like there is more to be done in that area so creating a program that you know gets kids more involved to more so join our program so i would like to do some work with you know younger athletic trainers but in a sense i am a younger athletic trainer so it would probably take a little bit more time before i get to that point but i do feel like as of now i can start reaching you know young that I've had many interactions with using the connections where, you know, I'm already in, in the east side of Columbus with a lot of the Columbus public kids, they already know, and not necessarily just for athletic training, but for any type of healthcare field, because when you look at the disparity, it's all across medicine and not just athletic training, particularly. So has race ever impacted you personally as an athletic trainer? Yeah, so I've, I've definitely had a couple experiences um, as I've been a certified athletic trainer. Um, there was one time I was working a tournament and um, I had an in the head or something, something happened. She walked up to me with her parents and she was explaining to me what had happened. And she stated like, you know, that orangutan over there, like hit me with her arm. And for a second, you know, you just kind of stop because you never, you never really expect something like that to happen. And, you know, obviously the other little girl that hit her was a different race than her and was, was a minority. So that kind of like made me step back, like, whoa. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes when, when that happens, because it's like, you know, you, that you can't, you, you can't say that, but now it's like, it, it starts from home and, you know, her parents are sitting there laughing that, you know, their daughter just said this. And I'm just kind of like, well, what are you going to say about me after I get done treating you and sending you away? Um, and then there's also the other times where I think, I am, and you know, my mom raised me to stand, you know, tall in my beliefs and be firm. So I think I may come off as, you know, the aggressive or the angry black woman a lot. So dealing with that and like the professional world of, you know, when I have an issue or when I need to say something to someone, you know, I've had issues where, you know, there's, you know, you don't have to be so aggressive or, you know, I was just asking a question or situations like that, which becomes frustrating because, you know, I just, when I want to say something or I, I enjoy talking about something, it's not to attack. It is just because it's something, you know, that I'm passionate about. So if my voice raises a bit, it's just, I enjoy what I'm talking about. And I, it's, it's a teaching moment. I want you to listen and I want you to understand if that makes sense. So what kind of coping mechanisms do you use when these negative instances happen? Um, 
so fortunately, I do have like an amazing support system. Uh, my best friend is an athletic trainer as well. And she has gone through her own experiences. So typically the first thing I do is I reach out to her. That way I can get that, you know, that first initial stage of vent out because sometimes, I mean, not sometimes, majority of the times you just have to let it go before you can have the reaction that you need to have with everyone else. So I do, I'll reach out to her and we'll sit there and we'll talk back and forth. Um, I'm really into working out now. I've picked that up lately and it's been extremely helpful with, you know, not even necessarily with everything going on, but with life in general. And then also um, being able to see other athletic trainers um, in the think tank, although I'm not active in the group me yet because I've only been in there maybe three or so weeks, but being able to experience other athletic trainers once again who have similar thoughts as me and similar beliefs and who are like me in a sense of being different being a minority and just seeing them react to certain things and knowing that i have that support system there is huge it's a it's a weight lifted off your shoulder so being able to read through the messages and you know get a laugh here and a laugh there is very huge for me Oh, a little bit more lively question. Can you talk about an embarrassing moment you've experienced as an athletic trainer? Yeah, um, when, when I think about like probably the most embarrassing moment um, is it would have been my first year as a certified. So about three years ago, I was working my first big event here at um, Thomas Worthington and we have a lot of land here and we have so many events so we had a huge cross country event and um i had never worked cross country before so i'm not sure if anyone watching this or if you've ever experienced cross country um but it was my first time and cross country runners run through the finish line and pretty much it seems like they drop like flies it's like you know you ran 15 miles and then you cross this finish line and you can't take five steps. So I wasn't ready for that at all. And I mean, it was a really hot day. So we had about two ice baths that were set up just in case we had any heat illnesses happen. Well, in the end, we did end up having heat illnesses happen. By the end of the day, we probably had maybe like above 20 athletes like under our tent and at this point it just became like a triage it felt like and I genuinely felt like you know a Grey's Anatomy episode where everything's just hitting the fan and I mean like a complete deer in headlights and it wasn't that like I didn't know what I was doing but I just never expected to be in that position and this is you know three, four weeks of actually being certified, actually being out in the field, like kids are going down with heat stroke and we're having to submerge them in ice and water. And I mean, complete, like I just, at one point like froze up, like what is going on? But um, fortunately for me at the end of the day, you know, we made it through, everybody was good. Everyone was safe, healthy in the end, but my mentor and athletic trainer who was also here at the time just kind of like looked at me and laughed and she's like you know you should have seen the look on your face and i'm like i had no idea it was going to be like that so that that's always like my my go-to embarrassing moment of like oh my goodness what is going on trust me you're not the first one to experience that I worked track and field as a GA and it was just like, is this real life right now? Cause I y'all just like, oh you, oh you too. Oh, okay, you're gonna over there. They just drop right. and then it's like, they're like, all you have to do is, you know, stand up someone like, you know, vomited there, stand up, keep moving. You're gonna get trampled. And I'm like, I can't, this is so much to keep up with for it being my first time experiencing cross country. I would have, you know, rather much enjoyed like a two team, a, a duel or a trio before taking on, I mean, there were over like 800 athletes there and it was, it was a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I don't miss those. I will say that I, I don't miss those. <laughs> yeah, no. Fortunately, years after 
the weather has been extremely cold and we we haven't had we haven't had any other issues but i would have been prepared after that i just need i just needed that one time to adjust myself all right alexis next couple minutes is for you your closing statement um i just think that you know mentorship is extremely important um, for young professionals, but also, you know, we talk about trying to make, make the profession more diverse. Um, I also think we're getting ready to run into an issue with bringing in more diverse athletic training students, simply because of the transition that's getting ready to happen with athletic training. Um, you think about those first generation uh, college students who you know, let's say they had the means to make it to, you know, just undergrad. Well, now you're telling me that they've got to go pay, say they, they don't get a graduate assistantship, if that's even being offered anymore, but they may not have the means to make it that far. So being able to, I just think it'll be a big disconnect of where we go from here and bringing more diversity into the profession. So I think it's going to be big in you know reaching those high school students and reaching the students who are already in athletic training and mentoring them and telling them these are the ways that you can go or these are the options that you do have and like I said whether that be athletic training or not but into the medical field in general of you know whether you're going to a community college and getting an associates and becoming uh a tech somewhere, but like giving them different options to get more diversity into the medical fields in general. But I'm, I'm very interested to see where we go when this transition happens. Alexis, thank you so much for doing this and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.